The 2020 election was really close. We believe we're on track to win this election. We still feel like we can get over 270 tonight. Frankly, we did win this election. And it was close in places where that makes things really complicated, like in the state of Michigan. It was nearly 24 hours after polls closed there before they had a result. Breaking news that multiple US networks have called the state of Michigan for Joe Biden. But in the tiny rural town of Bel Air in the state's northwest, a county clerk named Cheryl Guy had a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach. Something was wrong with the vote tally in her county and people were starting to notice. In Antrim County, ballots were counted for Democrats that were meant for Republicans causing a 6,000 vote swing against our candidates. Antrim County had reliably voted Republican for years, and Cheryl wasn't expecting any surprises this time. Cheryl Guy was a Republican. She'd voted for Trump herself, and she expected most of her neighbours had done the same. But the vote counting computers were saying that Joe Biden had won in her county by a lot. And it was starting to dawn on her that this was her fault. She'd made a terrible mistake a whole month before the election. The vote counting computers are pretty simple. You upload a file which tells the machine what a ballot looks like, and then you feed the ballots in. It scans the little boxes on the ballots for ticks, and then it uses the file in its memory to match up ticks to candidates. But Cheryl Guy had reformatted the ballot at the last minute to add a couple of new town council candidates without updating the file in the machines. Oops. All the boxes were in the wrong places and the machines weren't happy. As Cheryl scanned through the ballots, the machines threw error messages at her, but she repeatedly clicked ignore. I mean, we've all been there. Then, without noticing the results were wrong, she sent them out, showing that Biden had won her county. Oops. The county clerk came forward and said tabulating software glitched and caused a miscalculation of the votes. It wasn't a glitch. Cheryl Guy had just made a mistake, which she subsequently fixed and owned up to. Even if she hadn't, her county has a board of canvassers who were all set up to double check her work. But by then, it was too late. A solid red county by the name of Antrim County up in northern Michigan all of a sudden went blue. They actually subverted the election, and that's fraud. Within days, misinformation was spreading that the county machines could be flipping votes to Biden all <laughs> over Michigan. The county and the state, of course, lied and said that it was human error. In one Michigan county alone, 6,000 votes were switched from Trump to Biden. We have now discovered that 47 counties use this same software in the same capacity. In the weeks that followed, Cheryl Guy's mistake was used as proof of widespread fraud being conducted all over Michigan and all over America. There were calls for vote counts to be stopped and for ballots to be thrown out. And in Michigan, it almost worked. In an incredibly tense meeting room in Detroit, some Trump-supporting Republican members of a local election board tried to block the certification of hundreds of thousands of votes for Joe Biden. Now, four years on, they're primed to try again. They have dozens of people in place in low-level election certification positions across the country, ready to implement a scheme aimed at stopping the count. Of all the ways Trump tried to overturn the 2020 election, this is the one that is most likely to happen again this time. Our little secret is having a big impact. He and I have a secret. We'll tell you what it is when the race is over. How does this plan work? And what will it mean next week when the polls close? I'm Matt Bevan, and from If You're Listening, this is episode three of America's Last Election. America's system of counting votes is, well, it involves a lot of people. Here come Mrs. Dawson's colleagues on the election board of Riverton's 7th Precinct, each representing one of the major political parties. Election boards administer elections around the country, and members are split evenly between Republicans and Democrats. Mr. Schwartz is a Republican who works for the streetcar company. Mrs. Abernathy is a housewife and a Democrat. 
Mrs. Dawson as chairman. They've all known one another for years. These folks are on a precinct board. There are, and I'm not joking, nearly 177,000 of these boards across America. And that's not all. The precinct boards report to county boards, which report to state boards. There are hundreds of thousands of people involved, all tasked with checking each other's work. The figures are checked and double-checked. It's chaotic and it's messy, but it prevents big issues from emerging in the vote counting process. It means that mistakes like the one Cheryl Guy made don't go unnoticed. And this big, complicated system means that it would be very hard to rig an American presidential election. There are just too many different people involved. The system's inefficiencies are, in a way, a method of making sure that nothing can go too horribly wrong. After the votes are counted, each precinct, county and state board votes to certify that their results are correct. In most cases, it must be a bipartisan vote. This is Mrs Dawson, 7th Precinct. Ready to report. And usually, it all works fine. Stop the steal! Stop the steal! Except in 2020, when in Michigan, it didn't work fine at all. This time, it wasn't Cheryl Guy's fault, thank you. And if I'm going to tell this story properly, I'm going to have to go there. <laughs> Okay, so this is Detroit, Michigan. It's the biggest city in this crucial swing state and home to about half of the state's Democratic Party voters. Hello, Detroit! Detroit was key to Biden's win in 2020 and it was a similar story in a number of the swing states that won the presidency for Biden. His votes came from big, highly populated counties in big cities. This exposed a weakness in the system. Remember how I said that the sheer number of people involved in running national elections provided a safeguard against fraud? Well, in 2020, the result came down to a few big counties in these swing states, which meant that the number of people involved was narrowed down to only half a dozen election boards in places like Detroit and Philadelphia. In Detroit and Philadelphia, known as two of the most corrupt political places anywhere in our country, easily cannot be responsible for engineering the outcome of a presidential race. If Trump could convince Detroit, Philadelphia and one other election board not to certify their results, he might be able to claim victory in the Electoral College. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. If you count the illegal votes, they can try to steal the election from us. That brings us to a fateful meeting here in Detroit on the 17th of November 2020, a meeting of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers. Now, a meeting like this, where the fate of the Republic was at stake, it probably took place somewhere pretty fancy, right? Like this building here, the Coleman A. Young Municipal Centre, with its iconic Spirit of Detroit statue and the stunning giant bronze swinging fist commemorating world champion heavyweight Joe Lewis. The meeting could have been here, but it wasn't. Or here at the Wayne County building, a sumptuous example of Beaux-Arts classicism with its columns, its bronze sculptures and 75 metre tower on top. Nope, not here either. Instead, it was here at the former office of a local realtor. This is hardly worth it. I didn't bring warm enough clothes for this. I'm, I'm going back to my house. <sighs> now, now, this meeting at the Realtor, was it a grand meeting with all of Detroit's finest present? That's gone cold. Could you zap that for me? Would that be all right? No, it was about as 2020 as a meeting gets. You have to excuse me, the type is exceptionally tiny. It was a Zoom meeting with the four members of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers sitting socially distanced by plexiglass screens. If you get booted out, try and log back in. I'm trying to keep the room at capacity. Now again, this is the Board of Canvassers. The election is run and done, and these people are here to check the result and certify it. Their counterparts in Antrim County would have caught Cheryl Guy's mistake. But in Wayne County, Detroit, no big mistakes like that had occurred. 
The meeting was quite civil for the first couple of hours as the four canvassers, two Republican and two Democrat, asked questions about the results in various precincts. The Republicans had particular problems with precincts in areas with particularly high black populations. And then, when all the questions had been answered, it came to a vote. Should the results of the general election be certified? Chair Palmer? Nay. Vice Chair Kenlock? Yes. Member Wilson? Yes. Member Hartman? Nay. Two yeses from the Democrats, two nays from the Republicans. A deadlocked vote. Their reasoning was based on a discrepancy between the number of voters signing the voter roll and the number of votes counted. Now, there were 878,000 ballots cast in the county across 1,100 precincts. To block certification, you'd want a pretty big discrepancy, but the discrepancy was less than 500 votes in total. That's not in one spot, by the way. That's across all 1,100 precincts. After the Republicans voted no, the meeting was opened up to public comment, and the public had a lot of comments. The idea that there would be um, a mismatch of one or two votes in many precincts is surprising to absolutely no one. The criticism of the Republican canvases became quite biblical. Your nay votes leave a stain on your soul that is unconscionable. And Lord knows, when you go to meet your maker, your soul is going to be very, very warm. People really, really weren't happy. Democrats and Republicans hounded them to change their minds and certify the votes. You're embarrassing our state. You're embarrassing our county. And, and why don't you have any shame? Because you're not smart enough to realize you're in a cult. Shame on you. Shame on you for leading to this level of corruption. You are a disgrace. One of Detroit's top local Republican officials called in to take a few pot shots. As a city clerk, I am mortified right now. I am appalled. One of Detroit's police commissioners called in too. Yeah, we're no longer going to sit around and let white people take advantage of black people. Your day is coming. Have a good day. Okay. That would have been enough for me. I'd have caved right there. A police commissioner telling me that my day is coming? I'm tapping out. The public comment section of the meeting went on for three hours into the evening. The Republican canvases were eventually worn down. After being subjected to all of that, they agreed to change their votes as long as an audit was conducted by the state government. That passed unanimous, so we just voted on that. So. But before they could sign the paperwork, the two Republicans left the room. Monica Palmer was one of them. She explained in a press conference the following day what happened next. Sure. I um, was walked to my car by, uh, with um, member William Hartman. Palmer was shaken as she walked outside with her Republican colleague. The meeting had been intense, unexpectedly so. And as she reached her car, things got a lot weirder. I received a phone call and said, will you accept a, president, uh, a call from the president? And I said yes. I got in my car because it was cold. Uh, Member Hartman joined me. I received a call from the president. Just to point out, Monica Palmer is a county level election official and she is being called personally by the president of the United States. He thanked me for my service, asked me how I was doing. There was a genuine concern for my safety. She said there was nothing else discussed. That was the end of the call. Thank you for your service. Glad you're safe. Have a good night. Was that it though? According to a recording of the call heard by the Detroit News, Trump told the board members that if they signed the paperwork, officially certifying the results, they would look terrible. Trump promised the board members that he would send lawyers to protect them if they just went home without signing the certificates. They did as they were told. Went home without signing them. The following day, they said that they would not be signing these certificates. Um, I, would, I did not physically sign. If, if there is a signature on that document, it was my signature stamp used without my approval. Her signature wasn't on it. Officials said that her verbal agreement before the phone call with Trump was good enough. The partially signed certificates were sent up the chain and Biden won Michigan officially. So this attempt to overturn the result in Michigan failed. 
The Republican officials there were unprepared for the wave of public criticism that faced them when they refused to certify the results. But what if they were ready for it? What if they had joined the board specifically to refuse to certify a result that harms this guy? Hi, perhaps you recognize me. It's your favorite president. A couple of guys have an idea for how to achieve this. One of them is former top Trump advisor turned podcaster, Steve Bannon. Raise hands. How many people are precinct men here? You want to do something, that's what you do. You want to take it over from the grassroots. Look at these heroes right here. And after situations like the one in Wayne County, where Republicans on local committees folded to pressure and certified the 2020 election result, Bannon brought a man named Dan Schultz onto his podcast. Let's go now to Dan Schultz. Dan is a beloved figure. <clears throat> talk about a honey badger. Talk about a guy that grinds. Over the course of 2021, Schultz became a regular on the show. Don't just be a, a, a donor to the party. Become an owner of the party. And Bannon embraced what Schultz called the precinct committee strategy. Do you feel helpless? Want to know how to fight back? Well, here's the answer. ThePrecinctStrategy.com It's an incredibly boring, totally legal, and not at all anti-democratic plan to basically get Trump-loving conservatives to take up vacant positions on Republican precinct committees. There's about 400,000 precinct committee slots in the Republican Party nationally. 200,000 half are vacant. Dan Schultz had been pushing this strategy for more than a decade, but it only began to gain traction after the 2020 election. Put MAGA deplorables in at the bottom of the party and shift them upwards. Use their power to fill election boards like the one in Wayne County with loyal Trumpists. People who won't betray your favourite president just because people are shouting at them. People who think the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump have signed up for precinct committee seats in their thousands. Dozens of them have managed to find their way onto the election certification boards. In swing states, the Centre for Media and Democracy estimates 98 election deniers now sit on canvassing boards, including taking up both Republican seats in Detroit's Wayne County. Rolling Stone magazine reports that since the 2020 election, Republicans have refused to certify results in local and state level elections at least 25 times. In the swing state of Georgia, Donald Trump is very pleased with the lineup on the election board. You've heard, but the Georgia State Election Board is in a very positive way. In Atlanta in August, Trump called them out by name. Janice Johnson, Rick Jeffries, and Janelle King, three people are all pit bulls fighting for honesty, transparency, and victory. Again, these are election board officials. Donald Trump shouldn't even know their names, let alone be calling them out at a rally. What these election board officials are actually able to achieve, though, is unclear. If they refuse to certify the election results, it's likely that that decision will be overturned in court. But they will certainly have the ability to slow down and confuse the vote counting process. And it doesn't take much. In 2020 in Michigan, a woman made a mistake with a piece of software. It snowballed until an entire state's election result was in question. And officials in the state's largest city were refusing to certify that the election was free and fair. It's likely that we will see at least some attempts to delay certification if Trump is losing on election night. Delays like this have the potential to create chaos, undermine trust in the result, and fuel violence. And it's that violence that we're gonna talk about next. Many of Donald Trump's strongest supporters believe everything he says about the 2020 election. And if you truly believe that the election was stolen in a vast conspiracy led by Democrats and possibly assisted by foreign powers, if you think treason is being committed, isn't violence justified? That's certainly what happened last time. And that's next on America's last election. 